Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom and I'm joined very happily by Timo from Ryko. Timo, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Now today we're going to be talking about the new Nano Shield. Um, it's a fantastic product. We've always loved Ryko here at Raycom and we're thrilled to be able to chat with you and actually see what it offers and why it's such an advancement on what we've already seen from Ryko and how this has taken it to the next step. So do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself and actually what this product is and what it's been designed for? So yeah, my name is Timo Klinge. I'm working with Rycode as Head of Innovation for Professional Audio and Rycode. And um, I've been with Rycode now for five years, almost, something like that. And the once I joined, actually, um, the, the next generation of modular windshield kits was like my, my goal. That's what I asked Simon. Um, to do before I actually signed up. And uh, yeah, now five, five years later, we're there. And uh, so th this is a huge thing for us, for Rycode. And um, well, basically we started from scratch. So yeah. Sure. So key features we've got with the Nano Shield. then, guys watching at home, we do have one in the studio with us. And it's this, I want to say little beauty, but it's not, it's a fairly brilliant piece of kit. It's quite different to any of the other windshields we've already seen from you guys at Ryko, isn't it? So it's sort of 30% less weight compared to previous product, yet with the same robustness, even though at a glance it looks like it wouldn't be as robust, it absolutely is. Yet we've got improved sound in there, improved wind protection, everything we can think of you've actually built upon and improved, haven't you? We started from scratch with uh, the feedback we received over the past 50 years, basically. and. Um looked at every single component and the result actually was that we didn't take over a single screw from the old system so everything uh, is designed from scratch and yeah starting from from um, the, the materials the screws the joints the the mechanisms so yeah mm -hmm. perfect let's take a look actually at the product itself then i see you've got a few with you we've got one in the studio here for these guys if we actually take the cage off First thing I noticed when I got my hands on one, such simple operation, there's no tools required are there at all, it's all easy clips, slide on, there we go, I can slide the back of our cage off here, front comes off, and there we are, we already have our Sennheiser shotgun mic rigged up into our lyre, really convenient handheld grip as well, but no tools is a fantastic feature, I'm able to pack this yeah. down and assemble it so easily. Yes, uh, two free operation was one of the key features I wanted to integrate because basically having a little uh, hex key in the middle of the night and it's pouring down with rain, you don't want to handle anything like that. So, um, yeah, convenient in the field was uh, convenience in the field was one of the key features. So, um, all the screws we had were are now custom made and integrated, so you can't mm -hmm. lose them basically. Sure. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to make the, the, all the adjustments as simple as possible as well. Yeah. Cool. So there is, with the adjustment, one central component, isn't there? Here, you simply twist or untwist, well, twist to tighten, untwist it. And that is the core component that allows you to modulate everything. Nice and easy, one central feature. Yes, we have two different features. To be honest, one would be obviously the joint. Uh, the joint is, as said before, a complete new redesign as well. Yep. So one thing I found a little bit awkward with the old system, um, or most of the systems out there, that you either can lock them or you open them up, which means that the boom operator actually has to open up the joint to adjust it. And all of us know that at least 50%, and I'm very generous here, don't open them properly. So you have a lot of force onto the lever, uh, um, a lot of force onto the joint. And uh, on some of our old system that actually opened up the joint, which obviously is not very, yeah, yeah it's, it's risky. So we thought the joint completely new, which is now uh, that we in, in, uh, created a friction joint. That basically means that A, um, you can uh, twist it, uh, you can adjust the, uh, the angle 
as much as you want and you don't have to open it because there's a slip clutch implemented into the whole system. So basically if the boom operator is not entirely happy with the angle he's booming at, he can just touch the, the, um, the basket, tilt it to the preferred position and off he goes. It does not affect any kind of uh, the locking mechanism or the strength of the locking. And also um, it's symmetrical, so it works for left and right handed people, so you can just take it off, flip it around and screw it in uh, for your like, convenient thumb position. Yeah. So. And then the other one would be, and this is what I would call the central locking mechanism, is the bar. The bar is one of the yeah. two patents we fired on this new system, because the bar basically allows you to freely position uh, a the liars, you can add as many liars as you want, so... Oh, can you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, if you have very heavy microphones before, you had those ten, uh, two centimeter space in between, that basically nailed where the liars can be. So also, if you didn't want to put the, the clip on top of the interference tube of a shotgun microphone, that was kind of tricky. Um, now you can do it. You can just adjust it by a millimeter or whatever you need um, to make it perfectly um, fitting your microphone and your assembly. And then when you're happy with the shock mount, you can move the entire assembly to the best position inside the basket. So you're not wasting any space because like, if you don't have that opportunity, you often lose out a centimeter or two. So you're not getting as close as possible to your, to your actor or presenter. Sure, and on the subject then, when we're talking about the liar, we actually have cabling running through because we do have built-in filtering as well, don't we? We've got a low-cut filter, circuitry, all in there ready to go, plug straight back into your XLR. Yes, uh, we used, uh, we have a discontinued product which was called the Tacit. The Tacit is a third order 60 hertz filter. Um, now, because it was made in a time where wireless was the exception, um, it wasn't properly protected against wireless, so we basically discontinued it with the increase of wireless systems being on the shoot. So um, the first thing we wanted to do is make an active inline RF filter. So um, this cable actually filters out any unwanted RF interferences off your microphone signal. And then on top of that, we added a third order low cut filter. There are two versions available. One would be 80 Hertz, the other one 60 Hertz. Sure. Um, and uh, also all the components are shielded. So even the plastic is a conductive plastic. So it's a properly shielded and tested system. We've tested it with all the new digital transmitters, but also with the nightmare of all radio transmission, which would be walkie talkies next to a microphone. So, yeah. Covers all of that. And there's ultra-flexible cabling as well that's also, it's Megami cable, I think, isn't it, to minimize cable noise, the, the enemy of any microphone cable noise. So all built in there, it is truly a product you can just pick up and you are set to go, really. Yes, and it runs through a cable decoupling. This one. Which you can just pull out. So, um, it's basically a little TPU, so a soft rubber, um, and uh, which is, is uh, touching the cable only on four very small points. So it isolates all the cable bone noise, which still would be introduced into the cable. And if um, you want to use cables which have, are bigger than the supply cable, you can just take off the bar. Sure. Slide the cable decoupling out. And that opens it up for, um, for cables up to 6.5 millimeters, so standard nylon cables. Uh, and the use case scenario for this would be, for example, sports broadcasters who don't want to have a second cable in, in their line. They want to use the reel they have on their OB van and that's it, because they've tested it before they, they go. So they just cable right onto the microphone. And this sure. would be the way to go. Right then. Cabling and kind of our actual liars looked at. Let's look at the basket itself because that's probably the most notable change as well when you immediately look at this compared to previous windshields. It is an entirely new format, isn't it? So yes. tell me a little bit more about this sort of the design element behind it and actually how it benefits us. Uh, well, in a nutshell, we try to eliminate all the acoustic um, problems a tubular shape has but also try to minimize the impact wind has when it hits the basket. 
So there are a couple of different approaches we had to take. One is a uh, would be the shape. So if you see, if you look at the shape, it's now oval. Um, yeah. That is for multiple reasons. A, it eliminates the internal resonance frequency you would have in the tube. So basically, by the diameter of your tube, uh, you know exactly where the resonance frequencies will be, and you can't avoid it. And as the microphone is positioned exactly in the center, it definitely picks them up. Um, the next thing we did is uh, we tried to reduce the amount of material that we want to use and uh, therefore we were looking for the most, um, the, the strongest structure we could find and we found it in so-called nanotubes sure. which are very close to a, hexa, uh, to a, hexa, a standard hexagonal shape um, and provide a very strong structure without actually uh, using too much material and they haven't been just copy paste from left to right so they were basically hand uh, drawn by hand uh, so there's not a single parallel wall at all so if okay. you see through yeah. it you won't see that there's a segment on the other side um, on the same position and by doing this we got rid of the internal resonances we got rid of um, um, well, basically any reflection inside. And what that means is that when you measure a microphone or the polar pattern, polar response of a microphone without the winch key and with the winch key, there will be no difference. So we won't have any effect across the entire frequency range of the microphone, which was one of the key things. And the other one was that by utilizing the lining outside of the basket, we got rid of the nets uh, creating whistling sounds when it's hit by the wind. So that was the reason sure. why we brought the lining to outside. And there are various sizes of baskets as well, which again is a great feature because if you do want to chop and change and adjust, it's really simple because it is just a magnetized clip, isn't it? They simply slot together and then lock in place. I mean, correct. So they are four different sizes. They're simple all as that. Uh, symmetrical. So you basically can combine any kind of combination between those four sizes. Sure. Um, from smallest to largest, uh, the uh, single sizes will be made available as individual accessory. So basically, if you buy one kit and you have a couple of different microphones, you can just swap out the different domes and you're ready to go. So you only have to buy one kit, especially, yeah. which is obviously especially useful if you're traveling with light equipment and light uh, luggage. Sure. And then the actual securing the two together, two clips either side, you unlatch. And that's it. Exactly. Yeah. They save right, the they line. Come. They self align with magnets. Oh, they are self aligning, are they? Oh, of course yeah. they are. Makes it even easier. There we are. And uh, the next thing is obviously we wanted to make, like, like I said in the, in the introduction, uh, the, the product as robust as the previous ones, obviously, because that's one of the key use pieces of Riker products. They are uh, very robust in the field. So because we did not want to have a second ring like on the old one um, in the front, um, we basically made the entire basket flexible, but still strong enough. So it's basically indestructible. But the microphone and the entire internal assembly is protected by a glass filled uh, nylon ring here which is providing a huge like stability and robustness if you throw the whole thing into your pellet case and close the lid so yeah you can even s squeeze it into your you pellet can, case they are, it's, it feels unnatural doing it to a, a windshield but it's great to know yeah. you have that ability especially if Let's be real, these, these are going to be used in quite harsh environments on film sets, TV shows. When you've got equipment you can trust and know that it can take some abuse, yeah. it's, it's a brilliant feature, isn't it? Which is why I wanted also to make the outside lining interchangeable. That was the main reason, because obviously now we get rid of the protection of the lining by uh, doing the netting inside the basket. Um, there is like at least the possibility that it might snap or we pinch because obviously you know uh, that sometimes the sound equipment is put into the light pellet case or whatever it gets pin it gets pinched by a tripod or a stand or whatever you, you sometimes it's just out of your control so we didn't want to have a customer sitting somewhere uh, 
on a film shoot and uh, having a broken basket and not being able to replace anything. So basically, there's a little tie holding the lining, which you can just pop off. And then you can just take off the lining and like use it with another one. All the new linings are frequency transparent up to 20 kilohertz. Um, and um, the kit comes with three different colors, gray and black. The gray one is organic cotton. Uh, we've been looking at a million of different fabrics and, and uh, knitting uh, technologies. We came to the circular knitting technology, which is basically the same thing which is used in socks, as you like, obviously yeah. can tell. Yeah. Um, and organic cotton, specially treated with double yarn and, and steamed, is the one to go. You can, but you can wash that as any of your cotton socks. Obviously, you can wash it 60C, uh, which basically means that if it gets dirty or like nasty, you can just put it together with the other socks in your in your laundry. Sure. The black one is uh, merino wool. So, so very familiar for all the yeah. socks yeah. Enth enthusiasts. Uh, um, it is slightly better about a dB in the high frequency range um, in, in terms of frequency transparency and slightly better in the wind performance, but obviously it's wool, so um, you can only wash it at 30C and especially in times of a pandemic, we wanted to like have something which is a little bit more convenient sure to take care of but there are more uh there are also uh chroma green and chro uh, chroma blue socks which you can just put over uh the gray or black one so you don't even have to take the the other one off you can just put that on top of each other we measured it with two layers and the difference is barely measurable so we're talking about really? 0.5 really? db difference in terms of frequency transparency but the, you, you gain something like 4 db extra wind protection Sure. Um, and yeah, you can just slip over green or blue socks and there will be more like fancy and technic, uh, te technologically advanced linings coming. Sure, and then you can of course use that lining inside a further windshield as yeah. such, can't you? And you haven't got to worry about it at all. It's simply a case of you slip it in, slip it off and your sock exactly. won't interfere at all. Uh, the kit has been beta tested by quite a bunch of, of um, location sound mixers all around the world and they have mm -hmm. beaten it up quite he heavily yeah. and yeah, uh, so far without any, any problems. But some of them just preferred because they were own, only shooting outside to use the wind jammer just on top of the cage. So they didn't even uh, use the sock, which worked perfectly fine. And some wanted to have two socks on and a wind jammer because they were shooting in Greenland or something like that. And they, mm. But you said, um, so one thing I wanted to say about the liar, uh, okay. because you said yeah. we've, we've touched it before, but the liar, even though it looks very familiar to the old one, it's actually a brand new design and has very limited uh, similarities with the old one. With the old one, the entire layer was what, like basically one thickness and uh, the, the shore grade, so the density of the material made all the difference between the different um, layers we had. That worked perfectly fine, the isolation is beautiful. However, if you have shotgun microphones and you want to suspend them, ideally you want to go for a soft grade material, but then if you swing the boom, the lever of the microphone actually like was uh, quite strong and sometimes the microphone was beating and knocking against the basket. So again, we started from scratch, looked at all the different designs and this one is actually that you have a solid layer up to here, up to that uh, turn around point up here yeah. and then very slim arms, 0.7 millimeter to be precise on this one now which are at an angle um, to the extra clip. And by having the rigid arms, you actually have no movement up or down or left and right anymore. Sure. But you have like full compliance to the front and back, which now allows us to use even 55 shore great um, hydro material, which is extremely soft for really heavy and long microphones without a problem. Yeah. So you can identify the, the hardness of the lyre by the overmold color of the lyre, clip 
Mm -hmm. So red is the softest, then green, then blue, and then black. Sure. And that's just the amount of movement they'll give. Exactly. Sure. Perfect. No good stuff. Right then. The last component, and often, well, more often than not, your actual tangible part of the windshield is the grip, the handle, of course. And a fair bit of work's gone into the grip as well. Of course, it's it might not be integral to the actual sound of the windshield, but it is the catalyst between yourself and your microphone. So what sort of works with the grip and how has this improved over, over previous? The whole development process on the grips basically started when we've been um, doing our initial research on, on the development and we visited a lot of uh, television channels, sports broadcasters and all of them had cradles filled with uh, unused handles from the old modular system which basically meant that like there is a use case scenario but a lot of them don't use the handle ever, so which meant that we then took a closer look on to the people that actually are using the handles and most of them like, uh, have one thing in common which is that they have to hold on to the microphone for a long period of time. So let's say field runners in football or uh, on, um, field recorders who just want to capture a particular bird so they have to hold on yeah. to the, to the um, to the uh, microphone for a very long period of time and uh, with the old system you just like went to a period of fatigue over time your fingers got like numb and uh, it was not, not very convenient so we created an ergonomic shape which is like very convenient to hold on to and also we integrated like little air rips that just allow a little bit of airflow even when you grip tight but one of the biggest thing we integrated is that handle strap because um, you can tighten that around your hand and what it allows you to do is like you can allow, uh, you can um, open it, your grip and just rest your fingers without having actually pausing the recording so you can do that while you're shooting and then holding on tight and you won't be able to hear it because of the soft grip material. Yeah, and yeah, you, you will be able to hold onto the microphone for a much longer time. Well, when I, I noticed as well when I had it all rigged up, there's a really low center of gravity to it, it doesn't feel off balanced at all, which again helps. Yeah, and you can rotate it. So again, we uh, had left and right handed people in mind. And if you don't like the, the strap as well, you can just pop it off and uh, then use the handle stand alone. So now you would just have the handle for the people who don't like the grip. Good stuff. Okay, so that's the grip. There's a little bit more, isn't there, on the nano shield? Yes, well, um, there's one thing which I still want to talk about, even though it might just come in as packaging, but obviously we took some, some time to look into um, the case, which comes along with the kit as well. So um, the reason for that is, again, you have the lining now outside of the basket, so it seems to be unprotected. And um, we know that the modular system has been traveling around the world a lot. So we wanted to make the smallest possible footprint for the part and still protect everything. So um, you can be sure that it arrives safe and sound wherever you go. So basically the way it works is that you have the kit. It also come with a little, comes with a little pouch. You can stuff in the entire mount into the pouch. Pop it inside your basket. Uh, it has two zippers and that's for a reason. So basically when your entire kit is assembled, you can just... this way around and close it and then uh, you have it protected while you're traveling and you don't have to disassemble it again so yeah all right and it's made out of a very rock solid EVA so like it's protecting your kit very well yeah fun fact to the to the case it also works because the diameter of the basket changed from 10 millimeter uh, 10 centimeter radius now to 9 by 11 
which means that the basket also fits the old modular system. So uh, if you find uh, the case for your sized modular, you can use it. And then obviously the, the handle and the boss will stick out, but you can use it to protect your kit, which is something we've got, uh, we received a lot of requests for as well. Sure, sure. I think, Timo, we've covered everything. Guys watching at home, hopefully you've enjoyed the video on the Nano Shield. I've pulled it apart in bits with Timo, but uh, thank you very much for your insight. It's great to have you here with us thank with you all of your expertise and knowledge on the product. It is absolutely fantastic. I mean, we can't wait to start using them here at Raycom. So, Timo, thank you very much for joining us. Guys watching at home, thank you. again, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, there's a big red subscribe button down below. Make sure you press it so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. We'll be doing a lot more videos like this with great guys like Timo joining us in the studio. So thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.